Hello, in the previous video, episode five, I showed you how to set up grids so that we could draw dungeon maps. And in this episode, we're gonna actually create a dungeon map and we're gonna do it really easy. My name is Glyn Seal and welcome to Role Playing Cartography. Okay, so from the last video, we've set up our grid. We've got five millimeter squares, the documents in millimeters. And we're going to, just using the, the shape tools, make a, a, a dungeon. So I'll have the entrance over on this side. We'll create a corridor. Notice that I've got the grid snapping on with snap to grid set and you need that so that all of the lines that you're drawing are going to be on the grid now it doesn't matter at this point I'm, I can be really rough I can overlap things I'm going to add them all together later so that uh, they all sort of become one shape so let's just uh, do some wild creation I'm copying and pasting shapes here if you want to add alcoves and things like that we can just create a circle and then move it Hello, Glyn from Monkey Blood Design here. This is the point in the video where I remind you to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, share and comment. Thank you. The reason I I go over and overlap things is so that there's always a definite connection between two objects. If for some reason you draw a corridor up to a room and it's just slightly off, then when you're trying to merge all of the shapes together using the, the add command, it just, just doesn't connect that room. So by overlapping, it, it gives me a, a definitive connection. So I'm going to create some alcoves. And I do this by creating a bunch of circles. I'll have another one. Select them all and then just move them so they're on that wall line. I'll probably just take those two out. And let's just have a, a wacky room. Let's use the um, let's use the pentagon tool. Where shall I place that? I'll actually have that that way. Decisions, decisions. I'll have it here. Now, if I wanted to have um, a rough cavern dugout wall, I could use the pencil tool and let's just draw a waggly line and I just increase the stroke of the line and then I go to layer expand stroke and now what that's done it's kind of given the outsides of the stroke it's turned it into curves essentially 
So I could change the colour of it, I can give it an outline and we'll we treat it just the same as we would the other areas. So what I'll do now is I'll just select all of this and click the Add tool and then all of a sudden you can see we've got the makings of a dungeon. So at the moment this is all one shape but I'm, I'm going to do two things. First of all I'm going to create a floor for the whole of the map. So it doesn't need any stroke and we could Let's try and give it a sandy colour and we're just going to drag that layer down to the bottom. Then I'm going to copy that layer and put it on top here. Actually no, I'll put the curves on the top uh, and that, that becomes important because I'm going to make this layer the walls, so we'll call it walls. We'll call this layer floor. And we'll make this a darker colour. Now, at the moment, if we just switch off the curves, you can see that the walls layer is, is just one filled rectangle. What we're going to do is we're going to take the walls and, and we're going to remove the curve of the dungeon from the walls so that it basically cuts the dungeon out of the walls. And we use the subtract tool for that. And you always need to make sure that the thing that you're cutting out is above it in the layer order. So if I select the two objects and do that, you can, you can see in the thumbnail that it's actually removed that area. So we'll do some nice effects to this wall layer now to kind of make it uh, pop out. I mean you can leave it like that, it's fine. We could decide that we're going to add some stroke. Obviously way too much, probably down to one point. And you can see that uh, that brings out the outlines. But on this walls layer, we're going to click this little layer effects tool. And what we'll do, we'll add some outer shadow. And you'll see as I start to add the outer shadow, I could offset it into a particular direction. And we'll do that ever so slightly. Again, the light is coming from this direction, so it's casting more shadow on the walls closest to the light. And what we'll also do, we'll add some bevel and emboss. We don't want the pillow, we want the inner. And if we just select this and use the chamfered profile, and then we can increase this slightly. Now we need to adjust the direction that the light came from. It's coming from over here. And that will make the, the light that's cast on the walls and the shadow believable because they're, they're both in the same direction. So I've set that to 45 degrees, 45 degrees. And if we just come out and have another little look you can see that uh, that's looking pretty good. So, what we could do is we could even add texture. I've got some, some textures here, which uh, I think they're kind of default. kinds of textures uh, that I got with Affinity. Now I've set that to multiply so it multiplies the um, multiplies the texture down onto the layers beneath it 
and I could just take that back so it's not quite as obvious maybe 50 percent but you can see now that that texture's really lifted that floor and it looks pretty good you could do a very similar thing with the walls as well you can even use the fill tool select a bitmap and actually create your own uh, texture that you want instead of the fill color so from there you could even add another layer you could add some doors on create a door icon we'll make it brown and you could either keep them exactly like this I was just copied and rotated that you could select your doors right click add them into a group and then you could apply the same sort of 3d layer effects to that group so all doors would have this feature and we'll cast a shadow We could bring that to the top so it just applies over the whole of the map but you can see very very easily you can create really good workable maps especially for a virtual tabletop uh, you could just export this and uh, and drop it in your virtual tabletop no hassle and it looks pretty professional so i hope that's useful thank you for watching this video and uh, i hope that you found something useful uh, why not consider supporting what I do here by heading over to uh, the Monkey Blood web store at www.monkeybloodesign.co.uk. Uh, check out handy maps, uh, handy A5 size maps that you can use as game inspiration. There's towns and villages, buildings and structures and dungeons, caves and strange locales. Um, and you can use these within your game as inspiration, uh, populate them for your, your players to uh, explore and pillage. Enjoy, thank you.